Here's another quick tip from Whole Latte Love. A delicious latte or a cappuccino starts, of course, with a good espresso. But what sets the incredible apart from the ordinary is the quality of the milk froth. Hey, coffee lovers, Mark here from WholeLatteLove.com. Today I'll go over my two teas, which are key to a sweet and delicious milk froth. And stick around for the end of the video and I'll show you a way to practice frothing without using any milk at all. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using a machine with an auto frothing wand or a high-end prosumer with unlimited manual steaming power. Just focus on my two teas, which are tip position and temperature. I'll get to those in a moment, but first some prerequisites. Make sure your machine is clean and ready to steam. For auto frothing wands like this one, milk residue can clog internal components or block air intake holes, a very common cause of poor frothing performance. So take your wand apart, clean it up, and pay special attention to the air intake holes. When you reassemble, be sure all components are put together properly and fully seated. Next, know how your machine indicates it's ready to steam. On low-cost entry-level machines with a single boiler, you typically flip a switch and wait while the machine gets up to steaming temperature. And then a light comes on indicating it's ready. On higher-end machines with heat exchange or dual boiler, steam is usually always available after the machine is warmed up. For those newer to steaming, we suggest starting with a 12-ounce pitcher and fill with cold milk to just below the start of the spout. Now, cold milk takes air better and makes frothing easier. Before steaming, open the valve to purge any residual water from the wand. You don't want that extra water in your milk. After purging, shut off the steam. Now, let's talk about that first T, which is tip position. For both auto frothing and manual wands, with the steam off, position the tip of the wand slightly below the surface of the milk and turn the steam back on. If using an auto frothing wand, leave the tip in this position. On most wands of this type, more air is injected the closer the tip is to the surface of the milk. For manual wands, the idea is to lower the pitcher so the wand tip gets very close to the surface of the milk, finding a position that causes small amounts of air to get sucked in. You should hear an occasional rip as a venturi effect sucks air into the milk. Then as the milk expands, continue lowering the pitcher to keep the wand tip in a position close to the surface of the milk, which keeps small amounts of air ripping in. For a finely microfoamed latte style milk, stop adding air when the outside of the pitcher just starts to feel warm. For airier froth for a cappuccino, continue adding air for a little longer. To stop adding air with either style of wand, lower the tip of the wand into the milk. For manual wands, go just below the surface. For auto frothing wands, go deeper, up to and including covering the air intake holes, which results in no more air being added. From there, it's about the second T, which is temperature, while finding a tip position that rolls the milk. A common way of getting the roll is to angle the wand using the pitcher's spout as a guide. Now that roll is important as it works to break up larger bubbles and mix them to a uniform consistency. We like a final milk temperature of about 140 to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. In that range, the apparent sweetness of the milk due to heating is at its high point. Go any hotter and that sweetness quickly fades. Now you can use a frothing thermometer to get there or just use your hands to feel the pitcher. That 140 to 155 range is where the pitcher is just starting to get a little uncomfortable to hold. Once you've reached the final temperature with the tip still in the milk, shut off the steam. Remove the pitcher and wipe down the wand and purge it again to expel any residual milk. Now, if you ended up with some larger bubbles, you can give the pitcher a few knocks on the counter and some swirls to help break them up. After that, you're ready to pour. Now, keep in mind that while auto frothing wands are easy to use, they generally cannot produce the finely textured microfoam required for pouring latte art. Now, at the start, I promised to show you a way to practice frothing without using any milk, and it's very simple. Just add a few drops of dish soap to water in your pitcher and froth away. The soap makes the water froth just like milk. Now, just be sure to always purge your wand after practicing to get the soap out. Have any frothing questions? Let me know in the comments below. 
I'm Mark from Holatelove.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the good stuff on everything coffee. Hey, why not subscribe now for easy free access to more videos on everything coffee brought to you by Holatelove.com. Oh.